Instead of relying on words, we'll explore the magical realm of vibrations. Our existence extends beyond mere speech. It thrives in the subtle vibrations that ripple through the quantum field, shaping our reality. I invite you to learn how to harness these vibrations to manifest the life you desire. It's time to venture into the unknown and create a future that aligns with your heart and soul. Many of us adhere to the old model of reality, where we wait for external circumstances to influence our internal state. But what if I told you that you have the power to create your reality from within, from the quantum field? It's time to break free from past limitations and embrace the boundless potential of the future. Here's a secret. The key to manifestation lies in your feelings. It's not about waiting for external events to provoke a reaction. It's about generating emotions within yourself first. What thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? When you feel whole, empowered, and worthy, the universe responds in kind. Consider gratitude, the ultimate state of receivership. You don't wait for something to be grateful for. You cultivate gratitude within yourself. Have you ever given thanks before receiving a gift? The emotional signature of gratitude is a powerful force that signals to the universe that you are ready to receive. It's a cause and effect, a quantum dance of creation. Now, let's talk about falling in love with a future potential. In the vast quantum field, infinite potentials exist. Can you emotionally embrace a future reality before it manifests? Can you believe in a future that you can't see or touch yet? This is where the magic happens. Your brain changes, your body aligns, and you become a magnet for the experiences you desire. There's an intelligence within and around you that gives you life at this very moment. It orchestrates the beating of your heart, the digestion of your food, and countless functions in every cell of your body. This force is both personal and universal, the giver of life, the consciousness that permeates everything. You might not see it, but it's there, guiding you into existence. Now, let me ask you a crucial question. Are you defined by a vision of the future or the memories of the past? It's a choice we make every moment. If you find yourself in bitterness, frustration, or suffering, it's because your brain is anchored in the chemical residue of the past. But you can break free from this cycle. Let's take a journey into overcoming emotional residue, especially for those who have faced trauma or abuse. Imagine someone who has endured challenging experiences. We won't revisit the painful events, but it's essential to address the lingering emotions that often cling to us like shadows. In the aftermath of trauma, our bodies act like well-trained animals, seeking to recreate the familiar emotions associated with those difficult moments. It's as if our bodies become conditioned to respond to certain triggers, plunging us back into the emotional depths of the past. This can create a cycle, a loop of emotions that seem difficult to escape. Here's where the power of awareness and control comes into play. Imagine gaining control over this internal process, much like guiding a trained animal. By becoming aware of the tendency to recreate familiar emotions, you take the reins and steer your body into the present moment. Choosing to release the past's grip on your emotions and embrace the present moment is a conscious decision. By grounding your body in the now, you send a powerful message. I am not defined by my past, I control my present. This internal dialogue with your body asserts that it is no longer solely influenced by past experiences. You are reclaiming the reins of your life. Imagine this process as lowering the volume on those destructive emotions. It's like turning down the intensity of a loud noise until it becomes a mere whisper. The more you consciously guide your body into the present moment, the more you tell those destructive emotions that their time is up. You take charge, and the once overwhelming emotions begin to fade into the background. This journey is not about erasing or ignoring the past, but breaking free from the emotional residue that lingers. It's a conscious effort to untangle yourself from the web of emotions that may have held you captive for too long. Breaking the addiction to past emotions leads to joy and freedom. You release the torment, and suddenly your body craves a different experience. It's a powerful transformation from being defined by the past to being liberated in the present. Grief is a natural process, a biological pruning of neural circuits. It's the void left by something absent in your life. It's okay to feel grief, but it's crucial to come to a greater understanding of death, 
loss, and adaptation. Life is a constant flow, and as you adapt, you open space for new possibilities. Let's delve into the fascinating world of complaining emotions and the incredible transformation that comes with embracing change. Have you ever stopped to think about why we tend to complain when things aren't going well in our lives? It's not just a random habit. There's a profound connection between our emotions in those moments and our past experiences. When life isn't working as we wish, the emotions we feel are like anchors, keeping us tethered to the past. It's as if our minds are wired to revisit old grievances when faced with challenges. This emotional connection to the past can create a cycle of complaining, trapping us in a loop where we repeatedly focus on what went wrong rather than seeking solutions in the present. The journey through the stages of emotions is a crucial aspect of this process. It's not about avoiding or suppressing emotions, but understanding and moving through them. As we navigate these emotional stages, what we truly crave is freedom. Freedom from the shackles of past grievances, disappointments, and frustrations. Here's where the magic happens, my friends. I've had the privilege of witnessing this incredible transformation in people from all walks of life. It doesn't matter your age, shape, or size. The power within each individual to break free from the grip of past emotions is awe-inspiring. Picture this. Someone who has conquered themselves, overcome the challenges of their past, and emerged on the other side, radiating a newfound light. It's not just metaphorical. There's a visible change, a light behind their eyes, and a different physical presence. This transformation is a testament to the incredible power we all possess to embrace change, move beyond the limitations of the past, and step into a new reality. Embracing change is not about erasing the past, but transcending it. It's about recognizing that the present moment holds the key to our freedom. The radiance that emanates from those who have embarked on this journey is a beacon of hope for us all. This is a reminder that we can transform our lives no matter what struggles or setbacks we've faced. Use vibrations, not just words, to create magic in your life. Dive into the quantum field, embrace the unknown, and become the architect of your destiny. You have the power to shift your reality, starting with your thoughts, emotions, and the vibrations you emit into the universe. The best way to predict your future is to create it, not from the known, but from the unknown. Feel the emotions of your desired reality before it manifests, and watch the universe respond in unimaginable ways. When you give your body that energetic boost, you become unstoppable. No one can talk you out of it. No person, no experience. You're driven by your vision. Next, start writing down all the choices you need to make, the things you need to do, and the goals and experiences you want in your future. Each time you write one down, you feel more of those emotions, essentially assembling your future. A wise person does something even more powerful. They start learning. Want to be wealthy? Study wealthy people. Want to be healthy? Study healthy people. As you gain more knowledge, you're adding more threads to the tapestry of your future, giving you more material to dream in new ways. Here's the crucial part. Take out a piece of paper and list the thoughts you need to stop thinking. Thoughts like, I can't, I'll start tomorrow, or I'm too tired. Become so aware of these thoughts that you don't let them slip by unnoticed. Writing these thoughts down diminishes their power over you, making them lose their influence. This exercise is powerful because, from a neuroscientific standpoint, it's called metacognition. Observing your thoughts means you're no longer controlled by them. You're now the observer, gaining control over your mind. Next, write down the choices you need to stop making. Identify the things you need to stop doing, whether it's complaining, making excuses, or blaming others. Be honest with yourself about the behaviors you need to change. Also, Consider the experiences you need to avoid, such as certain people or situations that trigger negative emotions. Write down the emotions that keep you anchored to the past, like suffering, guilt, unworthiness, or despair. These emotions are chemically tied to past experiences. When you feel them, you're reliving the past, which clouds your vision of the future. Research shows that when we dwell on past emotions, we make our brain worse. Studies on memory reveal that 50% of what we recall from the past isn't even true. 
Our brain fabricates details to elicit emotions that reinforce our current state. This means we're often reliving a past that didn't happen just to justify our feelings, keeping us stuck in a limited state. Recognize this and take control. Transform your thoughts, embrace the present, and create the future you desire. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Not from the known, but from the unknown. This unknown space, a void, is the perfect place for creation. However, it can feel dangerous. When living in survival mode, people often avoid the unknown, preferring the safety of the familiar. If you hear a noise around the corner and can't see the source, survival instincts tell you to run, not to trust or explore. In such a state, you're unlikely to embrace the unknown. People living in a constant state of stress and survival are reluctant to step into the unknown because they can't predict the future. They hold on to what they have, even if it's limiting. Stressful emotions can be addictive, providing a rush of adrenaline and energy. Many use the problems and conditions in their lives to reaffirm this addiction, helping them remember who they are. Our thoughts can trigger the stress response, and if the stress chemicals are addictive, we become addicted to our own thoughts. Stepping into the unknown is where true greatness occurs. This is where you can start to ask yourself, what thoughts do I want to nurture in my brain? What behaviors do I want to demonstrate in my new life? Mental rehearsal. Rehearsing these thoughts and behaviors in your mind begins to install new neural circuits, making your brain resemble the experience as if it has already occurred. You're preparing your brain for the future instead of replaying the past. Those committed to transformation ask themselves if they can teach their bodies to feel the emotions of their future life. By embracing the joy of their new life, their bodies, acting as the unconscious mind, begin to believe they are living in the future instead of the past. This process takes time and continuous effort to change our biology. Observing people who have healed from serious health conditions, overcome past traumas, broken addictions, and created new opportunities reveals that they have crossed a significant threshold. They have become a new personality, and your personality creates your personal reality. Your personality, composed of your thoughts, actions, and feelings, shapes your personal reality. Therefore, to create a new personal reality, you must change your personality. This means rethinking your thoughts, becoming aware of and altering unconscious habits and behaviors, and deciding whether the emotions that anchor you to the past belong in your future. The biggest challenge is that most people try to create a new reality while remaining the same personality, which doesn't work. As we demystify this process, individuals realize that their current conditions, like diseases, are tied to their current personality. Consider a person with multiple personality disorder. One personality might be allergic to nylon, while another has diabetes. If changing their personality can alter these conditions, it suggests that diseases exist in the old personality, and by changing it, healing is possible. Breaking out of a biological mold is challenging, but within reach. Many people have been conditioned to believe that external changes, a new hairstyle, a new drink, or a new car, will transform their state. But real change requires internal transformation, moving beyond the hypnosis of external fixes to truly alter one's personal reality. The most profound realization I had was how deeply hypnotized and programmed we are. This realization has bothered me ever since. People observe their external environment and accept, believe, and surrender to the information without any critical analysis. They become programmed. However, when we start to wake up and reject these programs, we begin to realize that we are more unlimited than we were led to believe. This awakening isn't driven by profit or self-interest. When people start to realize they can heal themselves from various conditions, Parkinson's, lupus, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic pain, food allergies, an awakening happens. They acknowledge past traumas like childhood abuse or living in fear due to a violent parent and recognize how these emotional states trigger genetic conditions. Clear intention alone isn't enough to change reality. Most people are unaware that they move in and out of the quantum field 7.8 times per second. Each time they leave and return, they come back with the same information unless they change who they are. Quantum physics, 
the physics of possibility, explains the spiritual aspect of our existence. We cannot fully explain miracles, biological processes, or even the healing of a cut without understanding the quantum model of reality. Matter, which includes everything in the physical world and energy, which has consciousness and awareness, form a field of information. We are extensions of this field and spend too much time looking outside ourselves instead of within. Conditioned to focus on particles and matter, we neglect energy and information. Often, it is only in moments of crisis or the end of our beliefs that we turn inward and ask the bigger questions. If one were to hide God anywhere, it would be within the human being, as everyone looks outside themselves for change. We seek external things and people to fulfill emotional needs. However, true change comes from investigating and understanding ourselves. As we demystify this process, it becomes a skill. Einstein exemplified this inward focus. At 12 years old, he asked himself if a headlight on his bicycle would turn on if he rode at the speed of light. He pondered this question daily, laying on his back in a boat, looking at the sky. This contemplation led to his groundbreaking understanding of light and energy. He worked on this concept for 10 years before having an abstract vision that explained the relationship between light and energy. He needed to learn mathematics to explain his vision, and when he published his papers on relativity, he presented them as discoveries, not needing to reference others. His unique understanding rewired his brain for this knowledge. Einstein and Planck conducted experiments, applying energetic impulses to metals to see if electrons behaved like larger objects. They found that electrons gained and lost energy unpredictably, unlike how an apple falls predictably from a tree. This discovery showed that the subatomic world behaves differently from the large-scale world. When they tried to measure electrons, they appeared where observed and vanished when not observed, collapsing from a particle back into energy. This revolutionary finding revealed that the subjective mind influences the objective world, indicating that mind and matter are correlated. Thus, quantum physics requires an observer, as the mind affects the outcome of experiments.